If you've watched a video or two of mine, by now you'll have recognized that I'm a physicist. And not just any kind of physicist. I'm a particle physicist, which means that I get all excited about quarks and leptons and big monster particle accelerators. I mean, this stuff is totally cool. By processing an enormous amount of data taken by the LHC, my colleagues and I can learn a great deal about the laws that govern the universe. That phrase, processing the data, is not something easily accomplished. To do that requires tremendous computer resources, and that's the point of today's video. So how much data are we talking about? Just how much information is recorded by an LHC experiment? I could make this a short video in, say, 20 petabytes a year. But if you're not a computer wonk, you probably won't know what that means. So let's get some context. Computer information is stored in a series of ones and zeros. Eight ones and zeros is called a byte. After that, we use the metric system to name larger and larger sets of data. A kilobyte is a thousand bytes of information, a megabyte is a million, and a gigabyte is a billion. And a gigabyte is already a lot of information. A gigabyte is seven minutes of HDTV. Two gigabytes is the information stored in a shelf of books 60 feet long. And a standard DVD can hold five gigabytes. However, gigabytes are small potatoes in the LHC world. A terabyte is a trillion bytes, and a petabyte is a quadrillion bytes. In other words, a petabyte is a million gigabytes, and a petabyte is the most relevant unit for the LHC data. So how big is a petabyte? Suppose that we represent a single byte by a floor tile that is half a square meter. That's a square 70 centimeters on a side, or a little over two feet square for my American viewers. A kilobyte is then 500 square meters, which is an eighth of an acre, or half the size of the parcel of land your house sits on if you're a typical American suburban homeowner with a quarter acre lot. A megabyte is much bigger and corresponds to the size of the Pentagon if you include the parking lots. That's half a square kilometer. It's also about the size of Vatican City. A gigabyte is a thousand times bigger still and is the size of Tulsa, Oklahoma, a fine town if there ever was one, and birthplace of Route 66. It has an area of about 500 square kilometers. A terabyte is equivalent to half a million square kilometers. That's about the same as the combined area of four U.S. states, Illinois, home of Fermilab, my favorite laboratory, plus Indiana, Wisconsin, and Ohio. If you'd like to imagine a single country instead, that's the area of Thailand. But to get a petabyte, this is represented by half a billion square kilometers, and for that, you need the surface of the entire Earth. I hope this cements just how big a petabyte is. If a byte is as big as a floor tile, a petabyte is the surface of an entire planet. And remember that the LHC experiments record lots of petabytes per year, and that is a ton of data. CERN is ready for this enormous amount of data. Combined with the Wigner Data Center in Budapest, Hungary, CERN has available 150 petabytes of disk storage. That's enough to store over a thousand years of HD movies. The CERN computing facility can absorb up to 10 gigabytes a second. And each year, the LHC experiments generate over 50 petabytes of data that is stored to tape. So I've just been talking about storage capacity. But you also need computers to crunch the data. For the CMS experiment, we're talking about 100,000 independent CPU cores spread across the globe in a giant network called the grid. The grid consists of over 60 independent computer centers distributed across the world. If you try to run a computer program that analyzes LHC data, the system scours the world for unutilized computers and runs your program on the distant computer. When the computer is finished, it ships the result back to you. If you're going to be shipping data all across the world, you need excellent connectivity. You really do need primo networks. To give you a sense of scale, if you needed to send a petabyte of data from Europe to the US using DSL, it would take 10 years. Even using the network cable connection you might have to your house would take eight months. However, using the state-of-the-art transatlantic links that run at 340 billion bits per second, we can transfer a petabyte of data in under seven hours. That's smoking. When you get right down to it, the discoveries of the LHC rely crucially on computing systems around the world. And that trend will continue. 
So the next time you feel the need to swear at the network responsivity of your home computer, keep in mind the problems of the LHC computer professionals. Your problems could be way worse. <laughs>